Real quick before we hop into the video, if you prefer to be told by somebody who spent $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 plus in this game on how your free to play or your low spender experience late game should be, by all means, feel free to go ahead and hop away from this video. This video is not going to be about that. I have been playing Raid Shadow Legends for around three years and spent about a, uh, a total of around $400 in this game, which if you work it out is going to be around $12 a month. Um, a lot of what I spent was actually on the Raid Pass here. I forget where to even find it. It's been a long time since I've owned it. Um, they had like a pass that you could buy, which would essentially just speed up your progression, give you a bit more silver from battles those sorts of things they might have actually done away with it but anyways what I'm gonna be doing here today is showcasing my account real quick so you can see what sort of champions I have uh, I am kind of a late game very very uh, late game end game kind of player uh, beating up hard doom tower all that sort of good stuff I'll show you guys where I'm at you can get an idea of the champions I'm using uh, and then you can get an idea of the rares that I still actually use at this stage in the game so I do have quite a decent roster I won't lie so I don't find myself using a ton of rares in a lot of places. So obviously there are some champions on this list that you might end up using or you might not end up using just based on what your roster has, of course. So these are the legendaries that I use most here in this area. Uh, you know, nothing too, too crazy there. We got a bunch of epics here that are built out to 60. Lots of red dots everywhere. This game is basically just a red dot simulator, of course. Uh, so we keep scrolling down the list a little bit more here. These are the champions that I got to kind of finish it off. And then we start to get into the rares and the champions that aren't quite built yet here. I did pull a Turvold recently too, so uh, very excited to get him built up. And then this is going to be the vault of champions that I just really don't use or I don't need in my main collection. So some of these champions are used in certain areas. It's just, you know, for preset teams or whatnot where I can have them in the vault and save myself a little bit of space. And a lot of uh, champions in here that just aren't even built. Of course, I have way more champions than I can ever hope to build on a low spend account. Uh, latest Doom Tower champion I got was Gomlock here. And then this is my reserve vault, a lot of champions in here as well. Nothing too, too crazy, of course, but I thought I would showcase my account just to show you the champions that I do have. That way it helps to give you a really good understanding of the rares that I'm using and why, and I'll also show you builds today. So, let's hop straight into it then. This is in no particular order, of course. These are just the champions that I still get a lot of use out of. So... First up, I'm going to put Eris. Uh, Eris is an absolutely fantastic champion. This is the build that I have on her at the moment. Very low HP, very low defense, high attack, high speed, high crit damage. The reason for that is Eris only really gets used sometimes in my faction wars, uh, but she also gets used in my clan boss team, of course. Uh, so I do have the Demitha unkillable with Eris. Eris is the... Really, yeah, she is the only rare that actually is in the team, and she's absolutely essential to that team because of this skill here. Uh, fantastic champion, campaign farmable as well, and I do have a three-star uh, phantom touch on her to help out in the clan boss, of course. The next champion that I would say I use probably the most, uh, or actually no, we'll go down here. So this is gonna be Renegade right after Clan Boss. So I actually use Renegade far more than pretty much any champion on this list. Uh, however, I did have to put Eris first because I would say that Clan Boss is the most important area to be beating up daily. But Renegade is so, so, so useful to me and she's only a five star. Uh, this is her build here. So low HP, low defense, just very high speed on this champion. Uh, you would want to tune this speed for whatever works for you, but I have her as, I think, the fastest champion in my team. So she opens up with whatever skill everybody else goes. She loops back around into her A3, which uh, basically decreases the cooldown of all ally skills by two turns. So she's basically doing kind of a soft reset there. Very similar to a Kaimar. Uh, I don't even have Masteries on this champion, and I absolutely love her. So uh, she gets used a lot in Faction Wars. She gets used in all my hard dungeons, pretty much. I'm using her in Hard Spider. I'm using her in Hard Dragon. I'm using her in uh, Fire Knight. So normal Fire Knight. I don't have a hard Fire Knight team built out yet. Uh, she sees use in Ice Golem as well. If you don't have a Yumiko, or if you don't have a... Kaimar, this is going to be the champion that you can use to actually get you a reset in between rounds so that your Seer can blow stuff up or your Poison Combust can blow stuff up. All that good stuff, right? So absolutely fantastic champion, and she doesn't even have to be at six stars. So this is definitely the rare that I get the most use out of. 
Next up, I would say it's going to be Coldheart. Uh, I'm unfortunately, I don't have the skin for her. I would love to get one of these skins. I will probably do it if it pops up in the shop. This is the primary Coldheart that I use. She is in a Reflex and Perception. Uh, and then she has these stats here. So 3,500 attack, 71% crit rate. 273 crit damage very very good build actually considering that she's in reflex and for a blessing i have her done up in phantom touch depending on where i'm using her uh, i might actually change this because i do notice that it's doing some funky things inside of the shogun's cove uh, she does get used there of course i'm using her in the normal fire knight i'm using her i think in some of my dragon teams as well uh, she still does see a little bit of use inside the doom tower for some bosses as well really just anywhere you need a turn meter reduction as well as a huge hit and she also has the heal reduction on her A1, of course, so for Hard Fire Knight, she's very useful too. Uh, once I actually get a team built out for that and I have her included in it, I have some ideas in my head. I'll definitely uh, showcase it there. She's one of the only champions that I'm actually working on a second build of as well. So this is my second Cold Heart here. Significantly worse stats though, right? Like she's, uh, she's definitely way worse than she should be. I definitely have to go back to this champion and take a look. She's wearing pretty much all five-star gear. Uh, I do have her actually in Hero's Soul because I do use her in the Spider Dungeon, so having Hero's Soul in there is very, very useful based on the amount of mobs that there's going to be. The next champion that I get a lot of use out of is going to be Fellhound. Now, he's used a crap ton as well, so probably should be higher on the list if we were grading it by amount used, but he's just down here because what he does basically anybody can do and what he's doing for me is being a campaign farmer so he's got a lot of defense a lot of attack decent crit damage slow speed that way he can just kind of come in and pummel down the campaign uh, he's doing brutal for me all stages basically if i need him to and he has phantom touch as his blessing uh, so overall, a very, very good champion. He doesn't really see use anywhere else in the game, though, so I wouldn't recommend building out a Fellhound just so that you can have a campaign farmer if you're not going to use him somewhere else, if you're trying to save resources, that is, right? So my campaign farmer previously was Queen Ava at 5-star, which is the legendary champion. Um, obviously, you probably don't want to have a legendary as your campaign farmer, especially if you have to book them. The bonus to Queen Ava, though, of course, is that I didn't actually have to book her because her... Uh, skill reset if she killed someone. I can't even find her at the moment. I have to look, but there's just so many champions in the game that can be a campaign farmer. I would say stick with your Kale or stick with your uh, El Hane or whoever you might have got as your starter. Just stick with them until you get later game, in which case you can start building him out and then he can actually help you out with Doom Tower hard secret rooms and everything like that as well. That's where he sees a lot of use as well. And Finally, the other champion that sees a lot of use is actually going to be Apothecary, surprisingly. So Apothecary gets used in Faction Wars, uh, Doom Tower Secret Rooms, as well as Hard Fire Knight. The team that I'm running in Hard Fire Knight right now does actually utilize Apothecary uh, to make it work. So this is his build here, 43k, 3.3k, 236, and then the rest is kind of just whatever. Uh, I have him built out in Phantom Touch just so he can help get that Hard Fire Knight shield down. I can probably build this champion out a little bit better if I put um, you know more resources into them better gear that sort of thing you'll notice that I do have a lot of other champions built out like uh, tree shield not here for example this guy gets used in faction wars I'm just narrowing this down to the champions that I absolutely use a ton the rest of these champions don't get a whole lot of use even someone like a doom screech I'm just not using them much um, Bellor gets used in faction wars but that's really about it I have better champions pretty much everywhere else in the game I wanted to be brutally honest with you guys. I see people quoting, you know, War Maidens and Bellowers and Gnarlhorns and Pain Keepers and, you know, all these champions, right? But realistically, on most accounts, you're not going to use champions like that late game. You're going to get far better options that will quickly make these obsolete, meaning that if you listened, and if you took those champions to six stars, you've now just wasted a ton of resources. And then even if you've booked them and you've taken them only to five stars, you probably don't want to use them to upgrade other champions based off the fact that you already pumped books into them. So just be very, very careful about the champions that you're taking up. Uh, I'm a fairly low spending player, so I know a little bit more about the side of, you know, this being my only account. Because uh, I know sometimes 
content creators seem to uh, have a skewed view of free-to-play accounts or low-spend accounts, right? Because when you have a main account that you're spending thousands of dollars on, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars on, you can kind of just hop over to your free-to-play and it's very casual for you. But if you're somebody who's spending all of your time on that free-to-play, you need to make sure to manage those resources effectively. I hope this helped you guys out and you have a great rest of your day.